Hello again, and this is part two of session six on the short story element of uh, theme. And this part of the session, we're going to do together the short story The Scarlet Ibis by uh, James Hurst. And um, in this part of the uh, session, we're going to explore the theme or the different themes that we have in uh, The Scarlet uh, Ibis. But before we do uh, that, I would like to share an outline as how I intend to cover this part of the uh, session. Uh, and even before I do that, I would like to share with you the news that uh, I mean today's part of the session marks the end of our activities in the short story part of the course. So let's um, go back to the outline. Typically, we're going to start with an introduction about the author of the short story, and the author of the short story uh, for uh, today is James Hurst. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, I mean him, um, and then after that, I'll give you a summary of the plot um, and out of the, the summary lots of uh, ideas and questions are going to uh, pop up. The three major questions that the whole uh, short story um, um, is set to, uh, to answer uh, are, um, let me I mean, share with you the uh, questions. The first question is uh, whether uh, we should uh, believe in uh, what doctors uh, say or not, whether we should uh, take whatever they say um, uh, for, for granted or should we dispute uh, their uh, conclusions and uh, maybe uh, uh, seeking a second opinion, maybe uh, uh, depending on our own resources and stuff like that. The, uh, the, the second question is whether uh, we believe in the idea that, that, the, uh, yeah, that determination uh, can make the uh, impossible uh, possible or not. The, the third uh, major question, uh, I mean, concerns the idea of uh, we uh, of whether we are all limited uh, uh, somehow in, in some in some way or not. Okay, uh, these are the uh, the three major questions that the whole uh, short story is uh, set uh, against. And then after we finish uh, with that, we're going to move to um, ways uh, as how we can uncover the theme or the, the different themes that we have in the short story. If you still remember, we said uh, um, uh, in the previous uh, part of the session, in order for us to identify the, the theme or themes in a short story, we have to, um, to check a number of elements and aspects in the short story. We need to look at the title, we need to look at the uh, uh, the plot details. We need to um, to also pay very special attention to some technical dev devices uh, used, like uh, symbols for shadowing. We need to also um, look uh, very closely at the different elements of the short story. I mean, uh, I mean the setting, uh, the characters, the point of view. Okay, all of them can I mean contribute towards. Uh, I mean, uh, giving you a very uh, clear idea about the theme or different themes that uh, we may have in a short story. Okay, um, uh, let me also, um, uh, before I, I finish talking about the outline, uh, share with you some possible uh, themes that we, uh, we will be exploring uh, out of, uh, of, uh, for, uh, out of, uh, of course, um, um, I mean, keeping a um, uh, very close uh, eye on the different elements uh, of the short story uh, that we have. Uh, some possible themes that we have in this short story are um, uh, the first, uh, if you still remember when we spoke about short stories, when, when we spoke about themes, uh, we said that you can have one major theme and a number of uh, minor themes, and this is actually, actually happening in this short story. The, the, the major theme that we have in this short story is uh, the difficulty and challenge of living in a, in, a, in a hostile environment. And then you have a number of, uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't call them minor, but uh, other uh, uh, themes that are not as important as the first one. Uh, actually, they are, they are also in one way or another uh, linked and related to the uh, major theme that we have. Uh, the other themes is uh, or are uh, determination um, makes the impossible uh, possible. Uh, 
and also you have the theme uh, of, uh, I mean, the idea of how um, when uh, pride wins over uh, over love, the uh, result is normally uh, catastrophic uh, and tragic. Uh, okay, and we also have the uh, idea of familial and societal pressures and how they prove very, um, I mean, destructive to the uh, individual. Okay. Uh, before we uh, we finish uh, the part, uh, we're going to try to explore some uh, I mean affinities and similarities and relationships between this short story and the other uh, short stories in terms of the, the themes that they that they share. Uh, obviously, uh, I mean the themes that we have uh, just spoken about can be uh, found and explored in other uh, short stories that we, uh, like uh, we are going to. See. Uh, okay, now let's move to the um, short story itself. Let's, um, like I said, we need to start with um, Jim, James Hurst himself. I mean, Jim, James Hurst is the uh, writer of the short story. He is an American short story writer who was born in 1922, and he, um, when he started. Um, he uh, thought of himself as a, I mean, he was studying to, to become uh, an opera uh, singer, and obviously it didn't, um, uh, I mean, he didn't uh, succeed in doing uh, that. Uh, he couldn't establish himself as, um, as a singer. Uh, that's why he uh, I mean, started to um, explore other fields, and uh, it is our uh, I mean, uh, fortune and luck that he uh, tried the short story because he proved to be a very excellent short story writer and we now have the Scarlet Ibis which is uh, a classic. The Scarlet Ibis is, um, I mean, you, you sh I mean, uh, people uh, encounter the Scarlet Ibis um, in all the anthologies, I mean, no uh, anthology of a short story is without the Scarlet Ibis as one of its um, uh, short stories. Uh, okay, so um, um, James uh, Hurst, like I'm telling you, um, is, um, is a very talented uh, short story writer. And the Scarlet Ibis is uh, a testimony to that, okay? Um, the, let me share with you the plot of the, uh, this short story. The plot, in very simple terms, uh, is about... Um, um, actually, we have two um, main or major characters in this short story. We have uh, the uh, first-person narrator, um, uh, the big uh, brother, who uh, is narrating the, uh, the story. Obviously, he is narrating it after uh, it happened, I mean, it, obviously uh, there is a distance, I mean, in terms of time, uh, I mean, separating the narrator from the uh, events and incidents of the short story. So we have the big brother, the narrator, and we have Doodle. Doodle is um, a small or a little uh, child who was born uh, to a family of physically sound uh, People and but he was invalid and infirm. He was crippled some somehow and he couldn't uh, walk. Uh, when he um, he was uh, born, there were uh, there were no signs that he would survive and live. And uh, um, his family, uh, his parents, I mean, waited uh, for three months um, before they uh, uh, gave him. Uh, and in because they were under the impression that uh, uh, with his uh, existing um, in, infirmity uh, and poor he health he wouldn't make it, uh, he wouldn't uh, live. Okay? And they were also uh, I mean, giving directions to the carpenter to build uh, uh, him uh, a coffin. Um, anyway, uh, Doodle uh, failed them all and uh, left. And uh, he, when uh, he left, uh, he was uh, infirm and he couldn't uh, walk and there were no signs that he would uh, walk. They consulted doctors and they all 
uh, I mean, came uh, to the conclusion that he wouldn't uh, walk. And this was uh, like um, uh, a stigma for the family. Remember, they were all uh, physically sound and mentally sound and everything. And they considered, I mean, everyone in his own way, uh, of course, they they considered uh, this as a stigma to the entire family. Especially, this was especially so with the uh, with the big brother. The big brother wa was so, uh, I mean, uh, proud, and he wouldn't. Um, he was um, very um, um, sad and angry uh, over uh, the fact that his uh, only uh, brother is uh, invalid and infirm and is crippled, okay? So th this it was a kind of um, um, uh, a blow to his uh, arrogance and pride. Uh, anyway, uh, the big brother uh, made it uh, his business to, uh, to make his um, young uh, brother uh, walk uh, against the advice, of course, of the uh, the other members of the family against the advice of doctors who who uh, all uh, I mean said that uh, Doodle wouldn't uh, walk. Um, anyway, the big brother uh, tried his hardest. Uh, he started to inspire uh, his uh, brother, his uh, I mean younger brother. In a negative way, he would uh, remind him of the fact that uh, he is uh, um, different, and he would remain so if he uh, if he uh, would if he uh, didn't uh, try to do something uh, about it. I um, mean, he inspired his uh, brother, uh, his younger brother, and told him that they can uh, eventually make it, and they I mean, and Doodle can uh, walk, and they started to um, exercise and practice certain things and um, their efforts uh, bore fruit at one point. Uh, Doodle uh, started to uh, stand and he started to take very uh, uh, small uh, steps and walk and this was um, very uh, surprising uh, in a nice way of course to the entire uh, family and this uh, this um, a breakthrough encouraged the two brothers to uh, like uh, uh, take uh, to take it a step further, and they went. They would uh, go out um, um, and um, try to train and practice. And then there was uh, this time when there was a very big uh, storm. And they went out. The two of them. They went out. And um, in order to train and um, and exercise, and it was like I'm telling you, it was so stormy, and uh, Doodle, of course, remember he is very fragile and he is, uh, I mean, infirm and crippled and all, and obviously uh, he uh, he was uh, invited and asked to go beyond his uh, limited, uh, I mean. Uh, abilities and capacities, and he uh, um, and um, under the uh, um, uh, he couldn't uh, he couldn't take it uh, any longer, obviously because of his infirm uh, <clears throat> and weak uh, body, and he started to like um, obviously something um, um, went wrong with his body, and he started to. Uh, I mean, uh, blood started to come out of his mouth, and he tried to appeal to his uh, um, big brother to, to, to as to try to come back and help him. But obviously, his brother uh, was so um, um, concerned with his own stuff, and he was so. Uh, this was, of course, selfish upon the big brother. He uh, left him in the. Uh, storm and ran for his life. Uh, Doodle um, couldn't, uh, like I'm telling you, uh, was um, in his hour of need and nobody was there to help uh, him and he uh, died in, in, in 
the stool. This uh, is basically the, um, the, um, the plot in a nutshell. Um, when we start the short story, uh, we have the big brother narrating uh, I mean, what uh, happened and obviously he is remorseful and regretful uh, over the fact that he was too uh, cruel towards his uh, brother. He asked him to do to um, go beyond his limitations and obviously uh, uh, he is uh, alluding to the fact that this was uh, wrong and this was a mistake. But of course this, this is um, um, too late because obviously Dodo uh, got uh, killed in the storm because he couldn't take it uh, any uh, longer. I mean, uh, he didn't have uh, people, uh, I mean, respecting his uh, difference, his infirmity, his weaknesses, his limitations, okay? He, uh, he didn't have that uh, from his family, he didn't have that from his big uh, brother, and the result, of course, was tragic. He, um, he, um, he died. Okay. Um, okay. This is the uh, summary. Uh, like uh, I'm telling you, the three major questions that this short story uh, revolves um, uh, around and is set to answer is um, whether we should believe in what doctors say um, or, or not. Um, of course we should, we should, I mean, that, uh, obviously medicine is science and we all believe in the power of science. But, I mean, the short story seems to be saying that we have to believe in, in, in science and in medicine um, uh, uh, up to a certain degree or a limit. And we have the example of Doodle here. Um, Doodle, um, according to the doctors, when they were first consulted about his uh, condition and his uh, uh, I mean, physical infirmities and weaknesses, they uh, all came to the conclusion that he wouldn't walk and he, uh, he is or he was to remain infirm uh, for the remainder of his life, okay? Um, um, the, uh, I mean, the big uh, members of the family took whatever the doctors uh, said for granted and they uh, acted uh, accordingly. Um, but, I mean, um, Doodle's big brother and Doodle wouldn't, uh, wouldn't accept that and they started, uh, I mean, the big brother started to uh, uh, stimulate his brother and motivate him. And there was a positive result. Uh, I mean, uh, after uh, hours of uh, training and uh, practice and exercise, uh, Doodle started to um, to make uh, his uh, very uh, first uh, moves, and he started uh, to uh, walk. So this is a very uh, sticky issue. The uh, issue of uh, of uh, of whether to um, take whatever doctors say for granted or you have to take whatever they say with a grain of salt. The other issue that this uh, short story uh, seems to be highlighting uh, is the idea um, <coughs> of uh, determination and how the power of the will can make uh, a huge uh, difference. Actually, this is quite related to the previous idea. Okay, so doctors can can be telling you something. I mean, to the effect that you uh, you, for example, you are diagnosed with a serious disease and you are, you are to remain terminally terminally ill. Okay, but uh, through determination, you uh, you can uh, if there is uh, like they say, if there is a will, there is a way. Through uh, I mean, strong well, you can make all the difference and you uh, uh, recover from the illness and you become um, physically sound and, and everything. And we have so many examples uh, in life of people declared 
uh, terminally uh, ill uh, only uh, to find uh, uh, I mean, or to discover later that through their determination and strong will they could uh, make it uh, and they could uh, recover from uh, whatever illnesses and diseases they have and they they uh, they um, come uh, they become uh, normal uh, again um, um, the third uh, major uh, concern of this short story is uh, is the concern uh, uh, or is the idea of limitations whether we are all uh, limited uh, or not and whether we should uh, do uh, something about our limitations. Should we accept our limitations or should we uh, try to like uh, go uh, beyond uh, them, okay? And uh, the short story is also uh, is uh, replete with examples of, uh, uh, of, uh, of people uh, going beyond lim their limitations. Okay, so Doodle, uh, if you still remember, is one such uh, example that well, of course this was the work of his big brother but he wouldn't uh, i mean the big brother wouldn't have succeeded with uh, wouldn't have succeeded with his uh, little brother uh, if his uh, little brother uh, hadn't uh, accepted that okay so uh, the idea of having limitations we are all as human beings are limited uh, somehow in some way and whether we have to do something about it or accept our uh, limitations so um, uh, two sides to it okay the first uh, part uh, to it is that we have uh, doodle not accepting his limitations through the insinuations of course of his big brother and he he could uh, walk okay and this is going beyond his limitations remember he is uh, declared uh, crippled by the uh, by the doctors uh, again towards the end of the short story he is going to die because also of the fact that he went beyond his uh, limitations and he went out in the storm and uh, tried to uh, exercise like normal uh, people do in order to prove that he can that that he can be normal and, uh, and he can walk and run and everything this is also uh, uh, an example of, um, I mean, the idea that, yeah, you have, you may go beyond uh, your limitations, but there is, there, there has to come uh, a stage where, or when you have to stop. And this is something that Doodle and his br big brother didn't heed very much. They didn't heed the fact that limit I mean they have go they can go beyond their limitations but up to a degree or a level uh, okay uh, now we're going to move to uh, the theme or themes in this short story uh, we're going to uh, look at the different elements or the different um, clues in this short story that can help us uncover the the, the theme uh, again, let me share with you the themes and then see how we can uh, uh, prove that they exist in the, in the text. Uh, so if you still remember, we said uh, we have and typical of short stories, you can have one major theme and you can uh, have uh, some uh, minor themes. Um, uh, the good news in this short story is, in this short story is uh, um, uh, the fact that this shows, I mean, the, the themes are quite linked and related to, uh, to each other, okay? So the major theme that we have here is uh, the difficulty and the challenge of living in a hostile uh, environment. And then you have, uh, like I said, the other themes. You have the, the theme of determination and how determination can make the impossible possible. You also have the theme of... Um, um, of uh, pride, I mean the fact that pride can, if pride wins over uh, love, the end uh, result is uh, catastrophic and tragic. And you also have the theme of uh, pressures, whether uh, they are societal or familial and how they um, lead to the destruction of the individual. Okay, so we're going to take them one at a time 
we're going to uh, uncover uh, these themes. We're going to prove that they exist uh, through the different clues. Uh, okay, so the first clue, in order for us to uncover uh, that theme, we need first of all to uh, look uh, at the title. The first thing that uh, <coughs> Uh, I mean that uh, our eyes uh, I mean catches in a short story is obviously uh, the title uh, I want you to think of the title of this short story the title of this short story is uh, the scarlet uh, ibis and the scarlet ibis um, um, is uh, a bird um, so uh, I mean the color of the of that bird is obviously um, red and uh, uh, so what's the relationship what's what is uh, well, do we have do we have the scarlet ibis as um, um, do we have uh, the scarlet ibis as one of the uh, characters no uh, there is a reference to it in the short story at one point in the short story uh, and in the yard of the uh, in the family uh, uh, in the yard of the house uh, of uh, I mean Doodle and his big brother, uh, they uh, at one point they uh, find uh, a scarlet ibis, uh, I mean dying uh, over uh, there in the yard, and um, when they um, I mean they all went uh, there and um, out of the uh, I mean the hidden affinities that we're going to discover uh, later. Uh, we're going to find that Doodle is uh, paying very uh, special attention to the uh, the scarlet uh, ibis, and he uh, he seems to be showing uh, great interest in the bird. And he started to ask his father about the bird, and his father uh, told him that the uh, scarlet ibis. Um, obviously, um, um, was uh, thrown to the yard uh, of the house uh, by the storm, and he uh, told. I mean, the father told the family that the scarlet ibis does not uh, is not in its um, natural habitat. I mean, he does not belong uh, in this uh, in this part of the world. He he lives. In the um, in tropical uh, areas, in uh, in Florida, in South and in South America, uh, and it is only natural that when he uh, comes to live in, in a place that that is uh, that is very far away from its home, it um, it wouldn't survive. And this is actually what happened with the scarlet ibis. They found it uh, dead uh, because of the fact that uh, it lives in, uh, or, or it was drawn by the storm, and it is uh, now in, in, in an environment that is uh, hostile uh, to it. Hostile in the sense that it uh, uh, doesn't provide it, uh, it doesn't provide the um, the bird with the, um, I mean the the requirements, I mean, uh, I mean, of the things that you would otherwise find in, in its natural uh, habitat. Uh, okay, so um, the scarlet ibis, uh, if you look at the, um, <coughs> uh, if you would try to unpack the phrase, so, um, so uh, again, uh, ibis, like I'm telling you, is a bird that is that has a very long uh, neck and it's so graceful and nice looking and uh, its color is uh, scarlet and scarlet is of course uh, red so um, red um, I want you to um, to, um, to look at the um, se the significance of the color this is symbolism so <clears throat> so uh, the color red is of course the associations of uh, Red uh, are, I mean, blood, um, death, um, stuff like, and this is what is happening, okay? Uh, and of all the uh, uh, all the members of the family, um, uh, Doodle stand out 
as the uh, most sympathetic towards the, the bird. Um, he uh, s started, like I'm telling you, to show uh, I mean, um, strong and deep interest in the bird and started to ask his father questions about its whereabouts, uh, where it uh, comes from and um, why it died and stuff like uh, that. So this, uh, we have this strong affinity between the bird and uh, um, Doodle because obviously Doodle is also um, uh, having problems with the environment uh, he lives uh, in. Obviously he is uh, uh, different from the other members of the family is different from the other members of the uh, uh, the society where he lives because he was born infirm and invalid and, and physically uh, weak okay so this is uh, what draws um, um, doodle to the, the the fact that the two of them live in a hostile uh, environment uh, in an envi in environment that does not respect or honor uh, their difference, the fact that they, I mean, you, they, they cannot, I mean, they have to conform. They, the, the conformity is, uh, means a great deal in, uh, in, in this environment. If you don't conform and if, you, if you're not conforming uh, in one way or another, the uh, result would be catastrophic and tragic and this is what happened with the scarlet ibis the fact that it was drawn by the storm uh, from uh, its natural habitat and now uh, it, um, uh, it came to a place that uh, obviously uh, totally uh, different from its um, natural habitat and also uh, and correspondingly and along the same lines we have uh, doodle uh, who uh, lives in a society that considers his, indif uh, his difference uh, as a stigma. I mean, his family uh, treats him, um, does not, uh, are not, uh, his family, mem and the fa members of the family are not very proud of him because of his uh, infirmity and physical uh, weakness, which is something that, uh, again, uh, will uh, trigger him to uh, go beyond his to try to go beyond his uh, physical limitations and this is going to prove very uh, catastrophic and tragic because uh, obviously he um, he uh, he wouldn't um, be able to take it any longer and he uh, he will uh, or he would uh, die so this is the significance of the title uh, I mean like I'm telling you it can the title can tell you a great deal about the uh, short story and then after the title you have the plot and you have the different um, I mean incidents and events in the, um, uh, the short story in the plot uh, as, uh, uh, as given in the plot and they can tell you a great deal about the sh short story uh, and what uh, let me um, give you some uh, examples uh, from the plot that can tell you about uh, just uh, that. If you uh, go uh, all <coughs> the way um, to what we have so many examples that can uh, tell uh, us uh, about how the plot uh, I mean, can prove very uh, instrumental in uh, revealing the, the, the theme of the short story. Uh, well, yeah, let me give you uh, the particulars of uh, the plot that can tell you uh, about the, the theme. You have the for example, the Scarlet Ibis died in the family yard. Okay, so you have uh, uh, if the smell of death is in the air, so you have examples. The first example that the Scarlet Ibis died in the family yard. Uh, 
um, and then you have do the uh, learning to work, uh, which is um, uh, a reference to the idea, uh, to the one of the themes that we have, the theme of going beyond uh, uh, one's limitation uh, and also um, uh, I mean, points to the idea that if there is a will, uh, there is a way. And also the idea of um, the cruelty uh, of the different family me members and especially the, um, the big brother um, and what happened in the storm when he uh, walked out on his uh, brother. This also uh, I mean, points to the, the hostile environment that we uh, spoke about. Uh, one of the themes, the major theme uh, obviously, is the um, uh, living, uh, I mean, having this difficulty and this challenge of living in a hostile environment. So, uh, I mean, details in the plot can tell you uh, a great deal about what kind of theme uh, you may uh, have. Okay, so the title, we spoke about the Scarlet uh, Ibis. Uh, the title we spoke about uh, particulars or details in the plot. Uh, let's move to some technical uh, devices that the writer is also using, like symbols, for example. We have um, um, lots, lots of symbols, and um, of all the symbols in this short story, you have the. Um, uh, I mean, by the way, when I say symbols, symbols. Are, I mean, can be characters, can be objects, and they represent uh, abstract uh, ideas, okay? So, um, when you look at Doodle, Doodle is obviously a symbol, a symbol of all, uh, he represents all those uh, physically weak uh, people uh, who uh, live in environments that are hostile to them, hostile to them in the sense that uh, these environments do not uh, honor and respect and appreciate their difference. Uh, the fact that they were born different and they were uh, born uh, physically different and they should remain uh, uh, as such. I mean, they don't have to conform. We, we, we can't be all uh, um, the same, okay? People have uh, to differ. So the idea of not honoring this uh, um, is uh, what the short story is uh, addressing. So Doodle can be a symbol, okay? The Scarlet Ibis, like we said, is a symbol. The Scarlet Ibis, I mean the bird. The bird <coughs> that was found dead in the yard of the family, the bird that uh, we are uh, told um, came all the way from the tropics, uh, drawn by the storm. Uh, it is a symbol of all those who live uh, again in an environment that do not uh, respect uh, the, I mean, an environment that does not respect and honor uh, their difference, okay? Uh, obviously, the scarlet ibis and the bird um, lives in a place that is hostile to it. In terms of, I mean, the weather, uh, I mean, uh, conditions, so, um, uh, he could, uh, I mean, uh, the bird couldn't adjust and the, uh, the result was that it, uh, it, it died. Um, okay, again, if you look at the scarlet ibis and you look at the uh, scarlet as a color, the red, you're going to find the, that the short story is replete with this color. Uh, and of course, you know the associations of red in literature. Whenever you have red, you have violence, you have hostility, and you have death. And this is happening. So violence, uh, the violence that the uh, emotional violence that the, the big brother is exercising over his uh, young brother. Uh, according to the big brother, his uh, I mean, um, doodle is a stigma. Um, that's why he, uh, he, I mean, he, um, he doesn't fail to remind uh, 
his uh, young, uh, younger brother all the time of his infirmity uh, uh, and how infirm and invalid he is and the fact that the, I mean, the whole uh, family uh, is not so uh, happy with the fact that he lives uh, this way. Uh, so this is the um, uh, um, violence, the emotional violence, and so you also have, uh, I mean, physical violence, okay, when you push somebody beyond his limits and you, uh, I mean, give him uh, all the time the sense the, and the feeling that he is not accepted, this, this person can can do a lot of stuff in order to impress you that he is not different. Uh, he wants to get accepted and in order to, to get accepted he can do whatever, even if this can, can be at the expense uh, of his own, I mean, at his own uh, expense. I mean, uh, he can be risking his own life uh, in the process. And this is what Doodle was. Uh, do, uh, do that in order to gain recognition from his uh, big brother and the other family members, uh, he would uh, put his life on the line and risk his own uh, life. Um, okay, so um, again we're talking about symbols. We spoke about the, uh, the scarlet, the color, I mean the fact that the, uh, the red color is I mean, the whole short story is replete with this uh, color. Um, what uh, else? Uh, uh, different examples of, uh, let me, uh, again, I'm continuing with the idea of the red. Just remember the tree under which the, the, the bird uh, died in the yard was referred to as the bleeding uh, tree. So bleeding, bleeding, of course, bleeding, the blood is, uh, is uh, red. Uh, if you still remember, uh, at the end of the short story, uh, we're, um, uh, we are told that Doodle, uh, before he uh, died, he started to, um, to bleed from his mouth. And again, blood, and again, it's um, um, red, and it gives you the sense of this that that is uh, uh, that is always uh, there uh, in the short story. Okay, so um, what other symbols do we have? The storm is a symbol. The storm is a symbol of the of natural. Um, hostility. I mean, the fact that nature is hostile to the individual. Okay, so this is happening here. So na nature uh, was obviously hostile to the scarlet ibis first of all, the bird, and then to um, to doodle. The fact that he um, uh, he he died in the, in the storm. He couldn't. Uh, take it uh, any longer. He suffered a lot under the storm, and he uh, his life was compromised, and he was uh, he got killed in the storm. Okay, but this is so the the storm is a big symbol here. It's a symbol of the his hostility of the environment. Um, for um, uh, the storm for Doodle is. Um, um, is a symbol of um, both, I mean, uh, natural, uh, natural um, hostility and also emotional hostility. Remember, uh, it is only in the storm that his uh, big brother is going to walk out on him and leave him and give up on him. Okay, this is the uh, uh, the emotional aspect of hostility, and then you have the natural hostility. Uh, the fact that we, you have a storm. Okay. Uh, what other um, uh, elements we have? Uh, I mean, the other elements of the short story can also contribute towards, uh, uh, um, like, um, revealing the, the theme of the. Uh, um, 
before we even talk about the other elements, let's talk about foreshadowing as a technical device uh, used. So foreshadowing is when you have clues uh, scattered all over the short story that can tell you about the conclusion uh, that the short story is, uh, or the resolution that the short story is headed uh, for. Okay. Um, <coughs> um, foreshadowing starts as early as the first few lines of any uh, short story and this is happening okay foreshadowing you can uh, trace foreshadowing if you look at the title the scarlet ibis if you read even the very uh, first few lines and i i, I have them <coughs> if you for example read the first part the first paragraph you're going to find uh, lots of um, i mean the Lots of ideas that can tell you that some something um, uh, bad is uh, looming on the horizon, as it were. Something bad, some something uh, um, uh, tragic uh, awaits us as readers. Okay, so uh, you have. It was in the club of season. Summer was dead. So summer was dead. It's not saying that summer disappeared or summer. Uh, is over. It's saying that it is dead, and the choice of words, like I always tell you, is very uh, significant. Okay, so dead, and then when you go to the second line, that the ibis led in the bleeding tree. So, so bleeding, and then you have dead. These are all images of death, right? And then was stained. That the flower garden was stained with rotting, rotting, rotting when something is rotten. Uh, or rotting, it means that also it's a decay and end of life and stuff. Brown petals and iron weeds grew rank, uh, grew rank amid the burbled uh, flocks. And then you have um, the oil nest and the urn was untainted. Untainted, it means it, it, it was deserted, okay? So, um, desertedness the idea that it's a place that is on uh, that is not uh, inhabited of course um, when people inhabit a place or birds in, uh, inhabit a place it gives liveliness it gives life to it uh, if it is uh, untainted which means it's not ha uh, in, uh, it doesn't have um, like birds in it it means that it is deserted and also this is a yet another sign of decay and death and then uh, you have drifted and then you have when you go on the last graveyard flowers so graveyard flowers this is also um, I mean a reference to um, death and then you have then the self same paragraph speaking softly the names of our death again there is this insistence on death and uh, mentioning of Death. and then you have uh, for the second time that uh, bleeding tree is repeated and then that song seems to die up in the leaves die up okay but these are all uh, references and uh, to uh, to that that is looming on the horizon okay of course when you keep reading you're going to find uh, I mean clues uh, foreshadowing clues that can tell you uh, about um, the fact that death uh, is in the air, that uh, a catastrophe is in the making, uh, as it were. Um, <clears throat> uh, what else? Okay, so you have uh, quite related um, to um, this idea of foreshadowing. You also have the setting. We've been uh, reading the first part, and it, uh, the first part is normally uh, the setting of any short story. I'm going to. I'm not going to read the uh, the first uh, part again, but you can almost tell that the setting is also uh, the first uh, f few lines of of any short story is where the setting is. Where you normally have, uh, I mean, clues about the theme. You normally have. Uh, some of the characters presented you have the place so these are all there in the, in the, the first few lines and this is what we call the setting traditionally 
and they also, uh, um, like I said, contribute uh, towards the idea uh, of uh, death that is uh, in the making. Okay. Um, and then uh, after that, you have characters. So you have, I mean, uh, yeah, characters can contribute towards telling you about the. Um, the theme. You have two major characters. You have the big brother who is narrating the short story, and you also have Doodle, the the infirm and invalid boy who has to go beyond his limitations in order to uh, get recognized and get accepted by his family and the uh, uh, I mean the society around him. Uh, again. If you look at the character of the um, uh, the big brother who instigates um, uh, most of the uh, action, you're going to find that uh, this character is has a flow within it, and he he admits. I mean, but of course this was way um, uh, too late. I mean, he admits the fact that he was. Uh, sometimes uh, very harsh towards his uh, brother, he, he had, and he, he would ask him for the impossible. Okay, uh, I mean, if this uh, tells us anything, it tells us that uh, this um, big brother uh, is, has a flow within his uh, character. Uh, it is true that he is admitting, but he is admitting when it is much too uh, late. I mean, his. Uh, I mean, the life of his brother, uh, younger brother, got uh, or gets uh, compromised, got compromised because of the insinuations of the big brother. He kept telling his uh, big, uh, younger brother that he, he, uh, um, in order to to get uh, recognition and acceptance in society and in the family, he has to be. Uh, similar to the people, he has to conform, and conformity uh, is very um, costly here. It, it, it costs the boy uh, his uh, life. Um, okay, let's now move. Uh, of course, um, um, if you talk about Doodle and the character of Doodle, we've been uh, speaking about Doodle. Doodle uh, is obviously. Um, uh, a victim of circumstance. He, uh, he uh, was born invalid and physically weak. And, and what is worse, uh, you can be born in uh, weak or physically weak, but you can have a family and a, a society that can accept your uh, uh, difference, your physical difference, the fact that you're uh, weak and stuff. But uh, what is um, sad for, for Doodle uh, was the fact that his family and his big brother consider his, weak, his physical weakness as a stigma um, and as something uh, that they should be ashamed of. So in order for uh, Doodle to... Um, mitigate this feeling of stigma upon the part of his uh, family uh, members he has to go beyond his limitations and do something about his uh, invalidity and infirmity and weakness and this is like i said this this is going to uh, like cost him his own life okay um, let's move to the point of view in the short story um, so, if you still remember, uh, I mean, the point of view in the short story is uh, you have it's a first person uh, narrative where you have the big brother uh, narrating the short story and it reminds you right away of uh, Arabic, the short story Arabic, where you also have uh, the uh, adult uh, narrator who is narrating events of his uh, own life when he was uh, very uh, young okay and how he was fantasizing about uh, the uh, i mean a woman who uh, who was older than himself he fell fell in love with her and stuff like that so this is uh, similar where you have the big brother is narrating the events 
uh, after they happened. Uh, I mean, I mean, obviously years after they happened, and he seems to be um, also regretful and remorseful because uh, over what he has done and his wrong choices and the fact that he pushed his uh, own brother beyond uh, his brother's limitations and how catastrophic and tragic that uh, proved uh, to be. So um, this, this can also uh, I mean, um, inform uh, the theme or the themes uh, in the short story. Um, Okay, uh, so what I intend to do now is um, um, uh, um, I'll try to link the short story to the other uh, short stories uh, that we have in terms of themes. Uh, for example, um, um, the theme of living in a hostile envi in environment and environment that do not um, uh, accept or recognize your uh, difference is a theme that, that is uh, repeated here in the Scarlet Ibis and you can also find it in um, a letter from Gaza. Um, in in a letter of, uh, from Gaza you have this hostility towards the individual. Okay, whether we're talking about the narrator in a letter uh, from Gaza or even um, Nadia, the, the narrator's niece, who is, I mean, she, I mean, she is uh, different in the sense that she is only a child, obviously not making sense of what is happening around her. I mean, uh, words like occupation is very big for her, words like poverty and the, uh, having um, little access to food and uh, good education. Now, obviously, these are abstract ideas. So obviously, Nadia lives in a hostile environment uh, that is uh, more or less similar to the environment where Doodle uh, I mean, lived. Uh, also, uh, living in a hostile environment, uh, um, uh, also a theme that can be uh, can apply to, to build a fire with, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, up to a degree because obviously uh, <coughs> the nameless um, uh, protagonist in, uh, in To Build a Fire uh, welded all. I mean, he, he could have uh, decided not to go it alone uh, on the Yukon um, and on the, uh, desert and, and die. But still, he, I mean, the environment and the nature wasn't uh, helpful, wasn't very benevolent towards him. So again, uh, to build a fire <coughs> can have the theme of living in a hostile environment, okay? Uh, thank you, ma'am. With the character of Roger can also be an example of living in a hostile uh, environment, okay? Remember, Roger... Uh, was poor and he came from a poor family and <coughs> stuff uh, like that, okay? So this is living again in, uh, in our style and environment. Um, um, okay, let's look at another theme and see how far uh, it can apply to more than one short story. The, uh, the theme of familial and societal pressures and how uh, destructive they can prove to the uh, individual. It applies, of course, to the Scarlet Ibis and the character of Doodle who wants to uh, get recognition from his... Uh, uh, he has to like bow to the pressures of his family and his big brother who uh, consider his infirmity and weakness, physical weakness, as a stigma. Uh, these are the pressures that are exercised on him and that will eventually lead to his downfall and tragic uh, end. You have that also in um, a letter from Gaza where you have the uh, character of the narrator uh, who also under the yoke and under the pressure of his uh, I mean, 
attachment to his family and his uh, house and his city uh, has to stay and forego uh, I mean his uh, ambitions and dreams I mean he uh, he was meant to travel to California to start his own life uh, and become uh, a scientist and engineer and live uh, comfortable kind of life but because of the pressures of his family uh, and his society uh, as part of uh, as uh, someone from Gaza and Gaza is under occupation he has to stay and give up on his uh, dreams okay um, um, another idea is the idea of the treatment of children if you still remember this was uh, like a thread that we started uh, with um, um, we started it way back when when we spoke about uh, Nadia in a letter from Gaza um, and how um, she was treated. I remember she was amputated for um, 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 I mean she, uh, through the sacrifice that she has to uh, offer. Uh, you also have uh, Roger and the treatment of Roger, another uh, child. You also have um, the uh, narrator when, when he was young in Arabi and how um, he was treated by the uh, adults. You also have Jack and Jack and the Beans uh, talk and of course you have Doodle. So these are different children and when you look at uh, them with their different stories you're going to find that all of them were put at a disadvantage um, I mean through no error or mistake of their own obviously they are children innocent children but world of, of their worldview does not uh, normally coincide with the worldview of the world of uh, adults uh, if you look at Arabi and how um, he has this fantastic um, and ideas uh, and concepts and he believed that the world is all about romance and uh, um, um, exotic stuff only uh, and love of course uh, only to find out that he lives in a society that cares nothing for uh, for love and for um, elevated and lofty feelings, a world that is only concerned with uh, money uh, and material cupidity. Um, if you look at uh, Roger and how poor he, 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 he was uh, and, and his poverty uh, is going to force him to steal uh, I mean, money from and snatch the, the birth of Mrs. Lula. Okay, when you look at Nadia, of course, and, and we spoke about Nadia and the sacrifices that she has given. And when you look at Jack uh, and you think of why Jack would uh, like the idea of going to the uh, ogre and steal money uh, and other uh, properties from him, obviously. Uh, this was done under the pressure of, uh, of poverty. I remember, he was poor, he was having a nagging mom who is always uh, asking him for uh, money. Uh, no child, I mean, remember, children are very uh, innocent. And ideas of stealing and hatred and stuff do not exist uh, um, in them as yet. Okay? Um, um, actually, with this item and on this note, we come to the end of, uh, <clears throat> of, of the entire part, or of the entire short story uh, part of the course. Um, so until we meet again, thank you very much. Goodbye.